When two surfaces are in contact, forces of friction usually exist between the surfaces. If no frictional forces are said to exist when two bodies are in contact, we say that their surfaces are smooth, or that there is smooth contact between them. If frictional forces exist between the two bodies, we say that their surfaces are rough, or that there is rough contact between them. The property of friction is always between the two surfaces in contact, and does not belong to one or other of the surfaces. If the block in the diagram is subjected to a horizontal pulling force which increases from zero, it will remain stationary for a time, until the force P overcomes the frictional force F between the surfaces. The block is initially at rest, with the horizontal pulling force and the frictional force along the plane of contact both being zero. As P increases from zero, so must F, and they must be equal in magnitude up to the point where the block moves. At the point where the block starts to move, we say the pulling force has overcome the limiting value of the friction between the surfaces. For two particular surfaces in rough contact, it can be shown by experiment that the limiting value is proportional to the normal reaction between the surfaces. The constant in the equation is called the coefficient of friction between the surfaces. This represents the maximum value of the frictional force. When two bodies are in contact and the friction is limiting, two forces of contact act on each body. The diagram shows the forces acting on a block. The total reaction is the resultant of the normal reaction and the frictional force. We have seen that the magnitude of the frictional force varies from zero to its limiting value as the pulling force increases to overcome the frictional force. The angle of total reaction force will therefore also increase from zero to a maximum at the limiting friction value. At this point, it is known as the angle of friction and equals the inverse tangent of the coefficient of friction. When the friction is limiting, the magnitude of the total reaction can be shown to be equal to the value of the normal reaction multiplied by the secant of the angle. The laws of friction are listed here. When two forces act on a point or particle, we say they are concurrent. If these two forces are equal and opposite, then the particle is in equilibrium. However, if two equal and opposite forces act on a rigid body, but not at the same point, the body may tend to rotate. It is therefore not in equilibrium. It is important to distinguish between forces acting on particles, concurrent forces, and forces acting on bodies, which may or may not be concurrent. Concurrent forces cannot produce a turning effect. Non-concurrent forces are capable of causing rotation.
If one or more non-concurrent forces act on a rigid body, they may cause it to rotate about an axis. The turning effect of non-concurrent forces acting on a rigid body is measured by the moment of the force about the axis. The moment of a force about an axis is the product of the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the axis. The SI unit of the moment of a force is the Newton meter. Anticlockwise moments of forces are usually taken to be positive, and clockwise moments are usually taken to be negative. If several coplanar forces act on a rigid body, the resultant moment about a point in the plane is the algebraic sum of the individual moments about that point. In the diagram, ABCD is a uniform square lamina subject to the forces shown. To find the resultant moment about a point, it is necessary to calculate the individual moments due to each of the forces. The resultant moment about point A is found to be plus 6 newton meters. As this result is positive, the lamina will rotate in the anti-clockwise direction if A is the axis of rotation. As the result in this case is positive, the lamina will rotate in the anti-clockwise direction if A is the axis of rotation. For a body in equilibrium, the resultant moment about any axis is zero. In other words, the sum of the anti-clockwise moments about any axis is equal and opposite to the sum of the clockwise moments about the same axis. A couple is formed when two equal parallel forces which are not collinear act in opposite directions. Two forces, each of magnitude f acting in opposite directions at different points on a body, form a couple. The couple has a zero resultant, as the forces are equal and opposite. The couple does have a moment, which is equal to f times d. For a system of forces to be in equilibrium, no resultant force must act. If a resultant force acts, then the system would accelerate and would therefore not be in equilibrium. Also, no resultant turning effect must act. To determine if a system of forces is in equilibrium, any of the following three sets of criteria can be tested.
For a particle to be in equilibrium under a set of coplanar concurrent forces, the sum of all the resolved forces in any direction in the system must be zero. When this occurs, there will be no resultant force and therefore no acceleration of the particle. To determine if a particle is in equilibrium or to calculate a balancing force to restore equilibrium, first draw a clear force diagram. Then choose a direction in which to resolve the forces acting on the particle. Find the resultant force in the chosen direction, remembering that forces have no resultant perpendicular to the direction. Show equilibrium by determining that the resultant force acting on the particle is zero. Or determine the single resultant force acting and show the consequent balancing force required to restore equilibrium. For a rigid body to be in equilibrium under a set of coplanar forces, two conditions need to be satisfied. The sum of all the resolved forces in two perpendicular directions in the system must be zero, and the resultant moment about any point in the plane of the forces must also be zero. To find out if a rigid body under a set of coplanar forces is in equilibrium, draw a clear force diagram then, firstly, choose two perpendicular directions in which to resolve the forces acting on the rigid body. Then, find the resultant force in each of the chosen directions, remembering that forces have no resultant perpendicular to their direction. Show equilibrium by determining that the resultant force acting on the body is zero in both directions. Finally, choose a point in the plane and show that moments taken about that point produce no resultant turning effect.